Today we'll be taking a look at the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight controls. Before we get started, I'd quickly like to mention I did receive the product for free from Turtle Beach, however the opinions shared in this video are my own and I'm not being paid to say anything good about the product. With that said, thank you to Turtle Beach for sending the product to me and let's get started with the video. So we'll start off by taking a look at the two main parts which you get in the box, that being the throttle quadrant and the yoke of course. You can connect the two parts by simply clicking them together and then all you have to do is connect the blue cable from the back of the throttles to the yoke. I love the small details like how they color-coded the ports and the cables to really make the setup as easy as possible. If you want to remove the throttles, you can simply push this button at the back and pull them apart again. When it comes to actually connecting to your PC or Xbox, it's as simple as connecting the red cable from your yoke to a USB port in your PC or Xbox. For the setup, it definitely gets full points, as it's seriously super easy and intuitive to get everything ready. And worst case scenario, if you can't figure it out, it comes with a set of well-written instructions to guide you along. Now let's take a look at all the Throttle Quadrant has to offer. So firstly, we have a vernier-style throttle, as well as a propeller pitch control and mixture control. All of these three feel very nice. Let's now have a look at the throttles up here, which are designed to be like the throttles that airliners use. When you first get this out of the box, it will look like this, and this is an ideal setup if you're flying a four-engine airliner like the Boeing 747 for example. But let's say quad jets aren't your thing, you can swap all the covers around to make it more ideal for a twin-engine airliner or a tri-jet. And if you want to fly a prop plane which doesn't use the push and pull controls, then you can also get these covers for that too. I love how customizable it is to really suit anyone's needs regardless of what airplane you love flying the most. Another awesome thing about the throttles is that they have a really nice detent for reverse thrust, unlike with some other devices where you can't always feel the detent so well. I also want to point out the markings on the throttles as they're pretty neat. The first throttle slot also has markings like a speed brake would have in case you choose to use it as a speed brake. Now the one thing I will say that may not be perfect for everyone is that the throttles are a bit slippery. While they wouldn't move without you touching them, they are very sensitive and some people might want a bit more stiffness. There are a total of 10 buttons which you can assign to whatever task you want, and they all feel really good, and I really love how the light turns off when you press the button so you can be sure that your push rejects you also get a ton of stickers which you can put on these buttons to label their functions as you've chosen to set them up in your simulator. It's finally time we take a look at the yoke. It's got so many features and capabilities it's hard to choose where I should start, but let's start with how it feels. I personally do really like it, however one thing I've noticed is it's not always so smooth while trying to control the pitch of the airplane. Sometimes while flying it will just feel as if it won't move while gently applying pressure, so you continue to apply more pressure until it jerks a little too far in a certain direction. I've heard this becomes smoother over time as the yoke gets older, so let's hope that's the case. Other than that, it feels really amazing and it's so much fun to fly with. Let's now take a look at the buttons and switches. Firstly, we have two buttons on either side of the yoke, as well as four hat switches. It's so many that I can't even think of what to bind to all of these, but I always love having more than less. We also have two triggers on the back, which can actually detect how much you're pushing them, which is super neat since you can use these for your rudder. The only issue with that is while having your hands on the throttle, you can't really use the right rudder since your hand's already on the throttle. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but to some it may be a reason to consider getting rudder pedals. Let's also have a quick look at this awesome little display we get on the yoke. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of features, but it's got everything you would expect and want. You're able to change the color and brightness of the lights on your system, which I think is really nice. You can also use this to change the input mode, depending on whether you're using it on an Xbox or PC, and it also has a timer feature on it. There are a few other things too, but I personally don't find them especially useful. However, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to leave them in the comments. Let's now move on to this panel behind the yoke, which is filled with a bunch of status lights, such as the master caution light, low fuel warning, and so on. If you don't like the things they chose for you, you also get a spare panel with a bunch of stickers so you can customize it as you like, which I think is super awesome. Lastly, we have a bunch of Xbox buttons everywhere. I don't have an Xbox to try this out myself, but I assume all these simply allow it to work in the same way that an Xbox controller would, which is pretty cool. Now for the last thing about the yoke, let me quickly show you how you can set this up. If you remove this panel up here, you'll find this metal thing, which I honestly have no idea what it's called, but you can use it to turn these screws, which as you turn them, releases these things, which allow you to attach it to your desk. It holds the whole thing really securely and I think it works pretty neat for most desks. But if for whatever reason you can't use this method, they also include some sticky things which you can attach to the bottom of the yoke which will keep it in place as well. Now before we wrap up the video let's talk about compatibility real quick. It works both on Xbox as well as Windows machines and when it comes to the simulators it's fully compatible with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and comes with pre-made button assignments for everything. Now while other simulators don't have this luxury, it still works on everything else you'd expect it to, like X-Plane 11 and 12, FSX, DCS, P3D, and more. The only difference is you'll most likely have to assign the buttons yourself, which honestly doesn't take too long. Now that's about all I have to say about the Turtle Beach Velocity 1. I hope you find this review useful, and if it seems like something you'd be interested in buying, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you're into flight simulation and looking for a yoke, I would highly recommend this option. Anyways, that's it for this video. Feel free to subscribe and consider dropping a like if you found this video useful.